Hi everybody, this video is going to be a walkthrough of making this campfire animation and I will be explaining how I used Ignite to do that. So if you don't know, with Ignite you can start a small fire, for instance at the bottom of a campfire, and it will simulate the actual burning of the object. So the fire will heat up the wood, the wood will start glowing red, the fire spreads until the entire campfire is consumed. And if you wait long enough, all the wood will slowly turn into char and the fire will die out again. You can also follow this tutorial if you don't want to use Ignite, um, but it will be a lot more static. The flames won't move over the surface in any way, it will always keep looking the same. If you want to, you can follow along. I've put this file in the description. It has pretty much everything we need except for the fire and the wood material. So if we go into render mode, in the camera, you can see that we already have an animated lighting and camera setup. The stones are already here, the ground is already here. We just have the campfire without any materials for the sticks. Now the stones and the ground are both assets from polyhaven.com, but they're also included in the file. So now let's get started by actually installing the add-on. If you go to Edit, Preferences, and Add-ons, you can install it from the zip file of the add-on should be in the list and don't forget to mark the checkbox. As you can see, I've already installed it. And once you've done that, under the physics tab, there should be an ignite panel with, again, a checkbox. And using this checkbox, you can create automatically all the data the simulation needs uh, and also remove it. Uh, if you change your mind, you don't want to use the simulation again. So for instance, as you can see, if we use the checkbox, then there will be a few vertex groups, which will come in really handy during the simulation. And then if I remove the check mark, the vertex groups will be gone again. So for this simulation, we obviously want to run the fire on the firewood. So select the firewood and then enable ignite. This panel is dependent on whatever object you've selected. Let's enable Ignite, make it easier to view. And here's the frame start and end range. It should already be at 0 to 100, which is fine for this setup. And I can already click Bake. Very tiny progress counter, should take that long. And if it's done, actually not that much is going to happen. First of all, we can't view it. Uh, the easiest way to view it, especially in the beginning, before you've had any material setup or fire simulation, is to go to the vertex groups from before, click on the ignite fire one, which is like the output vertex group, and go to weight paint mode. Now this will give you a heat map uh, with blue for no fire and red for completely on fire. Now, the second reason we didn't see anything is because we never said that the fire should start anywhere. This is like the entire point of Ignite. Uh, you start a fire somewhere and it spreads out. You don't just want the entire object to be into flames at once. Although that will be possible if you wanted to. And so you notice there's also the Ignite input vertex group. Uh, in weight paint mode, you can right click to select the weight, the radius, etc. I can just simply paint where I want the heat to be, where I want the fire to start. And I'm going to make it start somewhere right below here. <laughs> okay, um, all right, note to self and maybe to you too. If you want to paint in weight paint mode, make sure you're actually in paint or draw mode and not just in blurry mode. And now if I try to click here, it should show up, right? So this is the heat map I was talking about. Zoom in a bit more, get in down below here, turn up the weight a bit so the fire is actually strong enough to really get going. This seems about right. And now I can maybe use some smoothing. Okay, so now if we go back to the physics tab, free the cache, bake again.
and now switch from the input group to the output group, you should see that the fire does indeed slowly spread. Watch closely, you should see there's sort of a fire front where the fire is always the hottest and it cools down a bit more while it spreads. And this keeps going. Now there are of course many settings to change. Uh, I'll quickly go over every one here. We've already had the baking. For physics, the time scale slows down everything uh, from the other parameters. It just slows down the entire simulation or speeds it up. In this case, it's slightly twice as slow. Time steps um, means how many time steps per frame the simulation does. I usually just leave it at one, which is the minimum. If you set it higher, then it might improve the quality of the simulation, but it will also take, for instance, with two time steps per frame, it will take twice as long to bake the entire animation. The ignition threshold is at what amount of heat or fire a new part will start burning. So some wood might heat up, but not enough to burn, which is the threshold point. Fire intensity just means how much heat is released when something does start burning, so high fire intensity means that in just a few seconds everything will be on fire and it will also burn out pretty fast. For which there is a related option, fuel consumption. Um, I'll give a bit of an explanation. Fuel is kind of misleading, it's not like you have a gas tank or whatever, uh, but it's that like a healthy wood is completely filled with fuel, that has one fuel, and if it's completely burned out, so it's fully charred, there's nothing left of material that can burn, then it will be at zero. So if your fuel consumption is really high, then in a short amount of time, your wood will stop burning. If it's low, it will keep on going pretty long, which is what we want for this campfire. Of course, campfire lasts more than a few seconds. And char insulation, which means that as char builds up, so as the wood turns into char, it kind of dampens the fire. So if you have high fire intensity, relatively high fuel consumption, but also very high insulation, right? that means that your fire starts very intense, but because the char insulates so much, it'll sort of slowly sizzle out and the fire will last pretty long, but the, like the tail of the fire, the final animation, won't be that intense anymore. Then diffusivity, it's a complicated word, but it just means how much the heat spreads. So how much when one part of the wood is very hot and one part is very cold, how much fast that evens out. And ambient cooling is, well, just if a fire stops, then how long does it take for wood to cool down? When the cooling is at a high value, it will cool down really quickly if the cooling is low, it won't cool down, or very slowly. Then we get to the volume. The volume is uh, a bit of an alternative to the other simulation. There's mostly the same kind of options like diffusivity, ambient cooling. And what the volume is used for is allowing heat to transfer not just from the surface of an object, so over the mesh, but also through the air. So let's see if I can show this better. If I disable the volume, free the cache and bake again, you should see that the fire spreads over these sticks, but then it stops. There's no way that, for instance, this part that's burning will influence any of the other sticks. So if I use the volume, like we've seen before, it will actually move through the air through the volume. And the ex exchange rate is the strength of this effect. So how much interaction there is between the air that's hot and the wood that's hot. How much hot air will uh, influence planks burning, for instance. So I think this is fine for now. 
and that means the next step is going to be adding a shader. Let's move to the shader tab. Go out of weight paint mode. This will always give an overlay, even if you're a render view. Go to object mode instead. And instead of making new material, we're going to append one that already comes with Ignite. So we're using file, and instead of using add-ons, now we're appending from the ignite sample.plant file. And there is material ignite bark is the one we're using now. Append with the word selected, select ignite bark. And as you can see, the wood is already glowing. It looks a bit weird now because we don't have flames, but trust me, this is what we want. Uh, there are some things you can change. Things like exactly how much it will glow, or the emission amount or emission strength. I think the default values are good. That's why they are the default values. So I won't change these too much. Uh, in short, the fully burnt threshold means at what point it will go from being red hot to complete char. So if the threshold is pretty high, then it will be char pretty fast, as you can see. Threshold noise will make it a bit more noisy. And if you can see it well, with this noise scale, well, there should be some noise in this transition area between going from char to red hot. And Vice versa. Let's go back to the original settings. All right. Uh, and since this is the preset, this is actually all we need to do for the shader. And we can move on to the fire simulation, or instead the flame simulation. The fire simulation has already been done. Uh, now let's switch to a layout where we have a timeline. And to add a flame simulation, you could use fluid, set up a domain. Uh, etc. But this can also be done automatically. Uh, this is already in Blender. Even if you don't have the Ignite add-on, just go to Object. This should be down here in Quick Effects, a Quick Smoke effect. And it already added a domain, set up all the fluid settings. Let's change a few things. I think the domain is a bit big. At least, definitely too big underground. There's not going to be any fire here. A bit smaller, put it around here. It also changes the emitter, the flame emitter, to wireframe some way. Uh, this can be disabled by going to object properties. And on our viewport display, it says from wire to either solid or textured. And as you might have guessed, it was a quick smoke simulation, not quick flame. Uh, to do this, just select the emitter, select the firewood, and change the smoke type, or the flow type from smoke to fire plus smoke. And this is where the magic happens. Um, the vertex groups we generated with Ignite, the simulation of where the fire should be, can be used as an input for the flame simulation, just by setting Ignite fire as the vertex group. Now all that's left to do is change some of the settings, render this uh, from the domain. Let's set the resolution pretty low just to preview it. Don't use any noise. Correct frame range. I'm setting the bake type to all. I find it easier to bake everything at once. And there is now, as you can see, it's low resolution, but there is definitely fire that only starts at the bottom and then spreads over time. There's obviously still something wrong, which is that because this started as a quick smoke simulation, the domain doesn't actually have the right shader. Uh, that's really simple, we just need to change one single value from the shader tab. The volume shader of the smoke, there's this value called black body intensity. If you turn it on instead of being a zero, 
you'll see there is some glowing fire. I like to say this pretty high. I mean, fire is very bright, so this should also be the case in the render. So instead of one, just add ten, and that looks better. Now, actually, lights up the area around it. You can see the orange glow on the rocks here, for instance. And with that, we're pretty much done. Of course, you can run the smoke simulation again at a high resolution, render all the frames, make an animation, etc. But this is it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Uh, if not, well, maybe leave a like. And thanks for watching.